The 1960s are remembered as an era of transition and revolution, when the old world was swept away by the forces of the youth and when a million new movements attacked the status quo and heralded a million new ways of thinking about the world. The 60s were defined by the counterculture, and the counterculture was heavily defined by drugs, specifically cannabis and LSD. So in this chapter, we're going to learn about one of the defining moments in the history of tripping, the doctor who tried to stay high forever. the neighborhood here come the provost working for the man is a no no staying on the low low playing with the popo when you're with the crew you're never gonna roll so low there goes the neighborhood here come the provost trying to give the world back its mojo the people with no hope need to go loco here come the provost to fuck up the whole show in the cellar of this building here on January 11th, 1965, there was a happening. A motley crew of poets, artists, intellectuals and assorted happeners gathered below in the basement, creating counter-culture history. Right down there, boy. They had uh, all of the happeners in the city. You had Johnny the self-kicker screaming his mantras until he reached Nirvana. Marike Kocher, the hippest chick in town, having her naked body painted, and Bart Huchus, the doctor of LSD, was revealing his self-drilled hole in his head. I woke up, I had a bad dream I saw a madman in a magazine He said I'm a doctor with mighty goals Told me open up white to look inside my soul He asked me was I nervous I said yeah a little bit There's no need to worry son I'm totally legitimate That was it, I was cool on the couch Then he put a sugar cube in my mouth And I was out Bart Huchus was a librarian and a medical student But first and foremost he was an absolute fucking space invader of cosmic proportions. He also never got beyond medical student because the University of Amsterdam, they like just refused his graduation because of his beliefs and his, his antics, his wacky, wacky antics. LSD's psychoactive qualities were discovered in 1943 and instantly began making waves across the West. But once it was discovered that it generally fostered anti-war and anti-capitalist sentiments in its users, it was quickly vilified as a mental poison and anyone preaching its use was vilified as well. While Constant Neuenhaus from the last episode was trying to create Homo Ludens, the man at play, Bart was trying to create Homo Correctus. I'll let you work that one out yourselves. And the way he was going to do this was by utilizing his best friend, LSD. He's one of those characters that could only have existed in the 60s. He was a savant, a happener, a cannabis supporter who named his daughter marijuana, but he was also remembered today as the lad who drilled a hole in his fucking head. <laughs> So let's start from the start. Back in the early 60s, Bart was taking a bit of a chill in the hedonistic beatnik paradise of Ibiza, where he was introduced to LSD. And he quickly realized it's, it's like a, it's consciousness expanding potential for society. So he returned to Amsterdam with conviction to preach the gospel and spread the word of acid. First, let's take a quick trivia hit of LSD, the boogeyman of the 1960s. In the first episode of this series on the Provo's Dada attack on the royal wedding, one of the plans was the fake scheme to spike the horses of the royal cortege with acid, or even the water supply of Amsterdam itself. What followed was a hysteria surrounding the substance and actually led directly to the criminalization of the wonder drug. So terrified was the government that the Anti-LSD Act was the fastest legislation ever passed by the Dutch government and LSD was criminalized in a single week. Lord forgive them for they know not what they do. The existential fears of the upper classes knows no bounds. When he came back to Amsterdam, he moved back onto this street with a lad uh, that we've met before, Robert Jasper Grootveld. And he's at number 158, but but 15254, it appears that uh, that building's gone now. 
to be fair, it was a condemned building in 1964 as well. But he moved into what was once here, a building called Hotel Lexington. As a medical student with a penchant for the bazaar, he took a scientific approach to his exploration. And one day he developed the theory that when humans first began to walk upright, our brain lost most of its, um, its blood and therefore we lost much of our full brain potential. Or as Bart put it, gravity brings you down. He cooked up this shit in what was once a building right here. But it ain't there anymore. Wow. But anyway, his theory stated that if we were to relieve some of the pressure, we could increase our brain blood volume, much like a newborn baby's skull. If we could reach this state, we could basically stay high forever, and this could be achieved via the ancient wisdom of trepanation. He got his hands on a foot-operated dentist drill. He covered his floor in newspapers and he started puffing on the strongest weed in town. He called up his buddy, Cory Yaring, the master photographer of the 1960s counterculture to document the scene. After all, you couldn't create art without an audience to view it. Corey Arling, the photographer, is one of the true heroes of the Provo era because without his photos, the Provo's antics would have remained a local affair. He was to be found at every happening in town to document the madness and as his photographs spread beyond the confines of Amsterdam, so did the anarchist message of the Provo's. And it all went down behind me here at number 24 here in Strat. Cor watched in horror as the bud puffing, budding young doctor crouched in front of a mirror and with a scalpel, he carved a cross in his own forehead, he pulled back the flaps and pressed the drill against his exposed skull. I heard the universe calling my name And I knew that I was not the same I got caught in the rain and was drenched with the knowledge That dripped from the ceiling and grew like a forest I wanna be honest and reach my potential The doctor said I've got the cure but it's experimental I mean to lead and I mean what I've said He got ready and he stuck the machine to his head The doctor can see you now The doctor can see you now the doctor can see you now. 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 The doctor can see you. The doctor can see you. Cor's camera clicked repeatedly as he documented the scene, but the sound was drowned out by the loud hum of the drill as it slowly bored its way through Bart's skull. When the, you know, blood was washed away, the third eye was revealed. All there was left to do now was to reveal it to the rest of the world. Sharpened the blade on the leather, his face became redder And I lost my head as he entered the center Releasing the pressure to fly like a zephyr Defeat the oppressor, I'm light as a feather Then the freaky professor went weak at the knees And was free of his tethers I said, this endeavor for business or pleasure He told me I'm planning to stay high forever The doctor can see you now 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 the doctor can see you now. 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 The doctor can see you. The doctor can see you. And all was revealed in the basement below us here, at a legendary happening called Stoned in the Streets, a legendary gathering of the wildest members of Amsterdam's avant-garde art movements. Inside here, Robert Jasper was chanting his slogans, Johnny the Self Kicker was howling his verses, and Garrett the Ether Sniffer was uh, sniffing ether, I presume. And Mariah Kocher, the hippest chick in town, was stripped naked and had her contorted body painted by the other happener, Simone Posthumus.
wild scenes played out as artists tried to outdo each other in an orgy of the bazaar down below the street. But the high point was the revealing of Bart's third eye, which was slowly exposed as the bandage bearing the words ha 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 were unraveled to a disbelieving audience. But if a basement full of artists, poets and happeners was shocked, you can only imagine the, the biblical shitstorm that hit when regular Joe Public was presented with this spectacle. Many of them are seeking a new sensation. And that is the drug lysergic acid diethylamide, LSD or acid for short. The avant-garde director, Louis van Gasteren, was on hand to document the madness. And when his documentary, along with Cor Yaring's photos, hit the streets, the shockwaves spread throughout society, becoming an international sensation. For instance, one English newspaper screamed that Bart Huchis was a dangerous idiot. And this is where he ended up getting stuck. The Wilhelmina Gasthaus Psychiatric Institution. Now some uh, funky cinema called Lab 111. <clears throat> I guess the, uh, the message the government were trying to send Bart was, stop advertising drugs or we lock you up. You can stand on the beach and scream, but you can't stop the tide. And LSD was making waves all across society throughout the 1960s. Scientists even began studying this magic substance and its uses for humanity were explored in laboratories as well as smoky basements. Not only here in Europe, but in almost every part of the world, we are facing the consequences of cruelty, of man's behavior, towards his fellow man. Today, we'll discuss such a man. Scientists were particularly interested in LSD for treating PTSD, and Louis van Gostere was on hand to record a documentary about a concentration camp survivor who was given acid in a controlled environment. He'd been unable to readjust to life after the war, and LSD was seen as the possible cure. What followed was a harrowing documentary showing the man describe vivid memories of the numerous concentration camps he was imprisoned in and the countless horrors and murders that he had witnessed. It's a difficult watch, but it showcases one of the numerous uses for LSD. And in recent years, acid has burst back into the official scene again, as labs um, are, are kind of experimenting with LSD-related treatments, and the results so far seem positive. So maybe we'll be popping down to the chemist for a tab of acid in the not too distant future. I'm in anyway. Sometimes you gotta drill a hole in your head, drill a hole in your head, drill a hole in your head. Sometimes you gotta drill a hole in your head, you gotta drill a hole in your head. Well, I've been living in the here and now, with my ear to the ground for the sound of the crowds in the town. I was out trying to get a few beers down, and then it hit me. I've been depressed for a few years now. I fell off of my bar stool and dropped my defenses. They said I got PTSD from the trenches. The state gave me drugs. That are all in my senses I want to view the world through the ultimate lenses Running from my memories A room full of elephants Conducting experiments Consuming the chemicals Unsettled floating through the desert With the Bedouin I want to be in bed with a head full of medicine Sometimes you gotta drill a hole in your head Drill a hole in your head Drill a hole in your head Sometimes you gotta drill a hole in your head You gotta drill a hole in your head As for Bartuchus after his self-trepanation, he was kept in the Wilhelmina Gasthaus for psychiatric evaluations, as everyone had assumed he'd lost his fucking mind. But after three weeks of tests, all showed that he was completely sane and, and that he'd been conducting a serious experiment, he was let go.
and he was I suppose free to spin through the streets and the cosmos another amazing character that burned so bright an entire era was illuminated so wherever you are the next time you're sitting down and you need something to do why not lick a stamp for the doctor of LSD Bart Huchus You better buckle up buddy and get you're ready, ready for, for the, the ruckus. ruckus Cause God is within, not, not above us. us We all just want someone up among us to love us. us And one of those mad motherfuckers is the man Bart Huckus Sometimes you gotta drill a hole in your head Drill a hole in your head, drill a hole in your head Sometimes you gotta drill a hole in your head You gotta drill a hole in your head Sometimes Drill a hole in your head, drill a hole in your head